South Africa's petroleum refinery capacity could become obsolete within two years if new sulfur emissions regulations are implemented. The South African Petroleum Industry Association is of the view that the short time frame provided for implementation would make it impossible to meet and will, to meet and will likely render the refinery fleet obsolete within two years. These and other stories from across the continent. The South African Petroleum Industry Association, which represents major oil companies, including BP and Shell that operate local refineries, has been in discussion with the government for years trying to resolve a stumbling block over financing the upgrade of six refineries to cleaner fuels. In January, the association warned that the impact of COVID-19 meant it was unlikely oil firms in South Africa would upgrade refineries at a cost of $3.9 billion unless the government allowed them to pass on the costs to consumers or offered some sort of financial support. The government gazetted new petroleum product specifications and standards in August that mandate the use of ultra-low sulfur petrol and diesel products from September 2023. Meanwhile, the Ethiopian government, with the support of an agency of the United Nations, has issued a fresh tender to secure around 200,000 metric tons of milling wheat. The UN's Office for Project Services is looking for offers for four lots each 50,000 metric tons of wheat, packed in bags and supplied into several Ethiopian destinations. Ethiopia is expected to increase wheat production by 1.6% to 5.2 million metric tons this marketing year as favorable weather combines with increased mechanization and improved irrigation in a move that is expected to boost yields. Finally, Ghana's central bank has kept its main interest rate unchanged at 13.5% with concerns over rising inflation balanced out by optimistic COVID-19 recovery forecasts. The Ghanaian economy grew by just 0.4% last year, its lowest rate since 1983, but it has gained ground in 2021, expanding 3.1% in the first quarter and 3.9% in the second. The bank's monetary policy committee sees Ghana's overall economic outlook, continuing on an upward trajectory despite inflation having risen for a fourth month in a row in August.